How are you doing today? <laughs> How are you? Yeah, really good. Um, I, I realised when I started watching the film, which I really enjoyed, that I knew so little about Millie Vanilli. Um, what was your kind of prior knowledge and how enjoyable was it for you as well to kind of learn about them as you were, as you went along this project? Yeah, I, I thought the same. When I first heard about Millie Vanilli, I was 14, 15, uh, and, uh, and I was just like, okay, mm -hmm, that's a crazy story. Okay, wow. And um, then, you know, when the producers called me and I, that's three years ago, four years ago, and they said, Matthias, we will tell the story about Millie Vanilli and, and, and uh, their way. Uh, and and um, I was, oh my God, that's a, that's, that's a real story. And they will make a movie out of it. I, it's, it's a German story and uh, a German American story. And um, uh, so I was, I was just, yeah, let's go for it. That's a, it's a crazy story. I want to be part of it. So, and here we are. And um, in regards to, to playing Frank, how did you kind of go about understanding him as a person? Did you speak to anyone who kind of knew him well? Or what was available to you in terms of research? I mean, did you even get the chance to meet him before, before he passed away? Yeah, I, um, I, uh, uh, of course, I watched documentaries and I started to be he, because he has a very difficult German accent, uh, uh, and uh, it's two different languages accents combined in one, and that was so I I watched a lot of documentaries to see his rhythm blah 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 and with the dialect code blah blah, and then uh, one day um, the producers told me hey we would love to can you jump on a Zoom with him he wants to talk to you and so uh, we talked but it was quite a yeah, it was difficult, you know. I was it was difficult to a to ask an eighty year old man, hey, can you please be honest and reflect on the the, the hardest time in your life, mm -hmm. and please be honest, mm -hmm. please be honest. Um, but it was it was an interesting Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. It was interesting. Yeah, because I mean, he, he obviously, you know, he died so recently as well. I mean, what does it change anything about your perspective on your role in this project and your experience embodying him? Does it add, knowing now, you know, he's kind of no longer with us, does it also almost add a kind of a profound element to the whole process in some ways? I mean, you know, every time when, especially because when we shot the film, he was still alive. So uh, uh, that was... I, I just tried to focus on, hey, he's a human being. So what can I, what do I, can I portray that the people understand? And I take it super serious mm -hmm. um, uh, that he is a human being with dreams, with feelings, with blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Mm. He also, I, mean, I love that he loved to sing on the tracks. <laughs> I, I've been, lis been listening to Boney M today, seeing if I can hear a kind of German accent in there. Um, but I, I just like you much of a singer. Is has that been a passion you've ever shared with with Frank? Do you like to do? You, I mean, even if it's just singing in the shower, is it something you enjoy to do? Oh um, yeah, uh, um, for me it was like uh, I played theater for such a long time, and then I thought because I was always working on scores for my German films by myself, and then. Uh, we thought, hey, why not founding a band and let's maybe try, how would it be to be on tour and to make music? And uh, and uh, that was a cool time. It was a great experience. Yeah, so I did a lot of music. I've went on tours. We played sometimes between 3,000 people and 15,000. So that was a crazy time. Yeah. I mean, Frank obviously had such a real um, ear for music. I just wondered, yeah. you, what, what was the last thing you heard that made you go, wow, okay. Have you, are you, are you, do you listen to lots of new stuff at the moment? I hear a lot of music, yeah, yeah. By the way, um, uh, the last uh, great song I, I really fell in love with is Lizzie McAlpine Alpine, uh, Ceilings. And every time when when I heard that song, I was just like, oh my God, I love that stuff. That's amazing. And I'm a Swifty. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Did you see her live on the recent tour? No, no, no. I didn't. I couldn't make it because uh, she was she played in Germany. But maybe I see her somewhere in the world mm -hmm. uh, performing. Yeah. I, I, I interviewed an actress from France earlier this year, and she actually said that when she takes on different characters, she creates playlists for that character in that role. I was, is that something that you, is that quite common, do you think, an actor to kind of have a, a sort of specific sound to go with the process of playing a character? Um, 
Yeah, but sometimes, you know, I don't like to create playlists, more like a perfume, you know, that how the character could smells. But mm -hmm. um, I'm more because I, I, I'm coming from theater. Um, I'm more like, you know, I'm prepping on the, the, the human skills aspects of this character and then like starting totally new on a day. You know, where I don't want to know where we're shooting, where we live. I just want to jump into this set, for example, without any rehearsals and um, just just uh, do some improvisation with the character. And one of the things I found so interesting about this was how the film really studied the kind of price of fame. Because some people, particularly, I think, in the arts, they chase a dream. So it could be a creative one, you know, a creative one. So they want to be a singer, they want to be a dancer or a director or an actor. But you have these kind of aspirations built out of a love and passion for your craft. But what comes with success and recognition is fame. I just wondered if that's something you feel you've ever had to contend with at any point, realize when you started to grow as an artist with that you kind of became famous at the same time and that how you kind of navigated that whole aspect of your work um i mean you know i came from nothing so uh uh so i really took i you know it my whole career was step by step by step by step and i started to live with it and learn with it and uh that really helped me. And I understood after a while to become successful and with the fame, uh, fame needs responsibility. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I really learned. And uh, and I did once a movie, for example, with uh, Tom Cruise, mm -hmm. uh, Valkyrie. And Tom always told me, hey, you know, uh, take your fan the fans, especially you, this is your audience, take your audience serious. That's you. You're making a movie for the audience, and I will never forget that. And uh, and um, mm -hmm. I learned so much. You know, when he, he takes sometimes two, what is it like two or three hours to sign autographs on a red carpet? And I think that's that's I think that's 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 wonderful because mm -hmm. that's what I learned with fame. You're a, you're somebody people are looking at. So behave at your best and try to be a role model. Yeah. And of course, um, I mean, obviously mentioning working with Tom Cruise, despite being German, you're very much kind of international actor. I mean, I, I met you in London for um, for the swimmers when yeah. you came over at the London Film Festival. And but many obviously actors remain kind of quite in their kind of own nations kind of industry. But you've always seemed quite keen to explore the world and work on projects from any place with any filmmaker. So I'm interested what it is that that attracts you to specific projects. Is it is it is it the story? Is it the character? What what, what takes you to to all these different places? It's the story, it's the language, it's the director, it's the genre, you know, because in Germany, it's we don't have that many genres that, that would work in, 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 in the theaters. Uh, uh, and um, so uh, that's what I'm always interested in. And I love the language. I love to play in English. I, I, it's such a great language to work with. Mm -hmm. This is so much fun. This is great. So and um, I want to see the world and there's so much to, to tell. You're talking of working with great directors, I mean, it must have been fascinating. I mean, you've got some wonderful sort of collaborations to your name, but how was Chris Nolan uh, a couple of years ago in Oppenheimer? That must have been quite an experience. He was amazing. He was, uh, I, I really, really loved him. He, it was impressive, really, because, uh, and especially his work together with Heute von Heutema, they've together as this duo making, it, it was just, he's, he's amazing. He's such, he's a, what is it? He's a master. Is that right? He's, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's he's he, he's you know, it's crazy. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it like being part of the kind of Oppenheimer experience? You know, winning all the Oscars and just kind of there's this, there's a very specific experience actors get to go on when a film has this incredible kind of global recognition like that movie did and the impact that film had. What was it like to be a part of that? I mean, I was a small part and I often said, you know, I'm a small part, but everyone I met was just like, no, you're part of the team. You're part of this film. And uh, and so everyone behaved like this on all the award shows and all the stuff. We all met and we were all sitting together and we've been invited to celebrate this film and be really part of this. So this was really, really nice. It was, there was a, it was, the time was awesome. And yeah. uh and always to reconnect with Killian because Killian was 
is it right to say my guy? No, uh, because uh, I had I had all my stuff with him, and uh, he was he was he's such a cool cool man. He's mm. fantastic. And just very finally, then uh, looking ahead, you're working with. Am I right? I think you're working with Fatty Akin on his next project. I mean, just wondering about that. Yeah. What where, is that? Is that kind of has that begun? Is it? If, if, is it how? What's the kind of whereabouts is that kind of pro, pro, pro project at the moment? Because I interviewed Tim. Um, he's a fascinating filmmaker. I interviewed him in Berlin a few years ago for the Golden Glove, which is a film I never want to see again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Um, but just wondered, yeah, what it's been like working with him if that's if that started. Um, Fatih is, he's amazing. I really, really like him a lot. Uh, the script uh, uh, he was sending me for this film is one of the best scripts I ever read, to be honest. And um, yeah, so this there's this film, there's another movie coming out called Brick uh, mm -hmm. I did for Netflix. It's a huge, huge uh, uh, thriller, horror thriller from Germany, which I, but you can see it all in the world. And, uh, and another movie, but um I love Fatih and the part I'm playing is a super cool part. Yeah. And, uh, but really the script is oh, so good. Yeah. I can't wait to see the film. I can't wait to see it as well. Yeah, the Golden Glove shook me to my core. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fatih, Fatih, Fatih and me, we met on, uh, I was uh, auditioning for the film. Mm. So that, that was the first time we really met oh. on, and he said, but yes, we need to do a movie together. And then oh. now we're doing this uh, film, it's oh. called Amram. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Well, maybe we'll catch up again when that comes out. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, we will. For sure, we will. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey You Guys! Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!